Hey, welcome to the Power of Quiet. I've got a guided meditation for you that will show you how to stay focused and really stand behind your resolutions this year. So you could see them as possible, as doable, and you could see them all the way through to completion. Now I call this a guided meditation, but this isn't some sort of woo woo, new agey sort of process. This is a very practical way of looking at yourself authentically so you could recognize the power that you have to make more effective, smarter decisions that will enable you to achieve your goals, have more prosperity, and especially more happiness, more peace of mind this year. And if you are in Europe, Come join me for the Weekend of Awakening that is happening here in Amsterdam on January 24th, 25th, and 26th. This is a full three-day immersion that will open up your true purpose in life. So you can live up to this purpose, live big, and create a meaningful, awesome life for yourself. So I'll put a link to it here so you can check it out. And in the meantime, let's get clear about our resolutions and have them. Okie dokie. So let's start off this session with a guided release. So just relax for a moment. And think about your intentions now. What it is that you look to achieve, not only for this course, but for this new year. What would you like to achieve for this year? Whether it's becoming wealthy, being more healthy, more active, doing more, Accomplishing some specific things, maybe in your business, your personal life, going on some vacations that you'd like to do. Now, think about these intentions like a to-do list not a wish list, but something that you actually intend to do. This is what I'm accomplishing this year. Think about these intentions with a bit of decisiveness. I'm deciding to do this this year. I'm gonna find a way, I'm gonna have this happen. This is what an intention is. It's a decision. So just look at it that way as you're looking at having your intentions. And notice if your mind is making any noise about what you're deciding. Oh no, that's never going to happen. It's going to be hard. I don't have the time. Maybe, I hope. Or maybe it's telling you you're crazy. Or maybe it's behind you, but it's behind you with a bunch of want. Oh, I, I really want that. Can't wait for that to happen. I'm so excited. Just whatever noise your mind is making right now, just notice. Notice what your mind has to say. Just watch your mind, observe it. And observe your mind objectively. See, what is your mind? Really, what is it? We all have a mind. But what is it really? It's just a sound in your head, a voice that talks to you.
Now, sometimes it says nice things, but not so often. Most of the time, isn't that voice negative? Doesn't it typically have something to complain about, to judge, to worry about? And isn't that mind quick to jump on you when you make a mistake? or you're not living up to your expectations, or things don't go your way, it's real quick to pounce on you. Tell you you should be negative. Tell you that you should be hard on yourself. Beat yourself up. Isn't that most of what goes on in that mind? It's a lot of restlessness. A lot of bother, botherations going on there. But where did that voice come from? Who gave it to you? Was it God who gave it to you? Maybe your next door neighbor, they gave it to you? Society, or maybe it just appeared one day. Well, it's your voice, isn't it? It's not talking to anybody else but you. Therefore, it belongs to you, right? You're the owner of that voice. So maybe you give it to yourself. And if you're the owner, if you give it to yourself, then why do you have to listen to it when it tells you to drive yourself crazy, to push yourself, to get frustrated, to get angry, to pick fights with people, to worry, right? All these negative things that waste your time, that waste your energy. Why would you follow along with that? And when you set goals for yourself, when you decide, hey, I'd like to achieve some of these incredible things, your mind says, oh, no, you can't. You're not good enough. You don't deserve it. You're a loser. Right? Who said you had to listen to that? Especially if it belongs to you. Now, just watch that mind. Watch what it says. But don't identify with it so much. Just watch it objectively, observe it, without getting swept away in it. Don't judge what it says right now. Don't try to change or correct what it's saying. Just watch, 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 watch it. And notice that voice, it comes from a place of insecurity. It's always feeling threatened, defensive, needing to protect itself. It's a very insecure thing. Just notice. And again, you don't have to judge it. Just watch it. And notice the things that it brings up to you. The stories that it presents to you are the same stories that presented to you yesterday, probably, as well as a week ago and last month and the month before that and probably even for years, it's been dwelling over the same problems, the same things that are not right in your life, the same challenges that you've been trying to figure out what to do, and you still haven't been able to figure out 
what to do about it. And that mind just keeps repeating that same story again and again and again and again. So it's just an instrument of repetition. It just repeats the same stuff, the same stories over and over. And all those stories are from the past. Maybe sometime in the past, somebody said something to you or you made a decision, you said something to yourself, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Whatever I do, I can never win. And that mind just absorbed that information and then it's repeating it back to you. It's been doing that ever since. So all that mind is, is just a recording and playback machine. Look at it, isn't that all that it is? It records something and then it plays it back to you, whether you want to listen to it or not. Now, who is that mind talking to? You have a voice in your head right now. It's talking to you. Who's it talking to? Who are you right now who's aware of that voice? Pay attention to that for a moment. Who are you? And see, this is an, something that you can easily define. This part of you has no face, no body, no name, no sound. It's just a silent presence a silent awareness who's listening to that voice. Notice that. And this part of you never changes. This part of you is eternal. And this part of you has no problem. And this part of you has no insecurity. That voice comes from a place of insecurity, but this part of you, the silent presence, has nothing to be insecure about. It has no needs, no wants for anything. Notice that. Now, it's up to you whether you identify with the presence or you identify with that voice. Problem is most of the time we're identifying with that voice. We're going to it for guidance. Tell me what to do. Tell me what decisions I should make, how I should see things. Tell me whether or not I can get my goals, right? And it's quick to jump in. It's not a very positive thing. It tells you all the problems, all the obstacles, all the reasons why you can't. Why do you want to seek advice from that? And who are you to make the decision in the first place, just to decide, I'm having this in my life. I'm deciding that I'm going to have this goal this year. That's your decision. And you don't need your mind to tell you whether you can do that or not. And that's our work that we have ahead of us to quiet that mind. So it doesn't get in the way, doesn't interfere with our decision to have our intentions, our goals. Now you're never gonna be able to 
change your mind. You're not going to be able to rationalize it away or rationalize it into being positive. No affirmations, no positive thinking is going to do it. What's going to do it is quieting the mind. You can't erase it from the neck up, but where you can erase it is from the neck down in your stomach or chest area. So think about one of your intentions here. One of the big things you would like to achieve in this course or in 2020, and focus on your stomach or chest as you think about this. Notice if you have a tightness or contraction right now. See, anytime you have a negative thought, there's a suppression there. And that shows up as a tightness, a clenching feeling in your stomach or chest. Wherever you feel that, you can erase it. Open up an imaginary window or door right in front of that right now. Just open up an imaginary window or an imaginary door right in front of that contraction. It's like a ball of energy. Now imagine that energy just slowly passing through that door bit by bit. Just open up and allow that energy to leave. Imagine it moving through that door. Watch it leave. And more. And even 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 more. And just let that energy go. You don't need to know anything about that energy. Why it's there, where it came from, where it's going to when you open up the door, what's happening to it. It's just energy passing through, that's all. Allow it to leave even more. And 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 notice how you feel. Notice if you feel a little bit lighter. That difference that you feel is an awakening. An awakening to the real you. To all the positive force and goodness that's within you that can create any goal that you set your mind to, no matter how big, you have the power inside of you. But it's been covered up by feelings, covered up by suppressing. Whenever we suppress, we feel that contraction. Our body lets us know. Now you could feel the difference, letting it go.
Now, if you could just focus on any of your goals and just let go of all your contractions, where you just had no contraction about it, you'll see that you could just decide, I'm having it. And that's all it takes. So you could even just open up and let all that energy leave. That's how I manifested my first $20,000. I didn't even do a goal chart. I just sat down one evening, thought about it. I had all these contractions about it. They're all tied with the stories in my mind. I can't, I'm a loser, all that stuff. And I just paid attention to my feeling center. I just kept letting that energy go until it just was totally free. And I was so free, I forgot about the goal until about a month later when it showed up as a check in the mail. Almost exactly $20,000 out of nowhere. And all of us can do this. And all of us are blocking ourselves by suppressing, keeping that door closed. And this is why yesterday I went over the six steps. And I said, one of the most important steps in there is to make releasing constant. And one of the ways that we could do this is by keeping this door open constantly. Moment by moment, day by day, all the time. And we could do this with practice. Now, just notice how you feel. You feel lighter. Now think about that intention of yours and see if it's a little bit more possible than it was a few moments ago. Notice the difference. You see that? Notice you're thinking about it is more intuitive, more positive with a sense of I can. Maybe you don't know how exactly, but it's just like, yeah, I can a little bit better. And this is showing you that you don't need to go in and change your mind. Just let go of the negativity and you're already tuned into being positive. It's natural to you. It's not even a thought, it's just a knowingness, an inner conviction. And that is a decision. And just like yesterday, when we read Yogananda on page six, Imagination is a very important factor in creative thought. But imagination has to be ripened into conviction. You can't do that without a strong will. But if you imagine something with all the power of your will, your imagination will be converted into conviction. And when you can hold that conviction against all odds, it will come true. And his master used to say that if your will is strong, whatever you imagine will be created for you. It is a fact. Now, you can force your will, you can force willpower to make a decision. Like if you decide to quit smoking, if you have a strong conviction, you could have the willpower, you could overcome the habit, it might take a little time and might be uncomfortable as you go through the process. 
But what we're doing here is an easier way. And we're using our willpower in a different way. We're using our willpower just to open up the door. We're using our willpower to focus ourselves into releasing. And by doing this, we remove the negativity so that our conviction is just natural. We don't have to force it. We don't have to hold on to it. It just is. It's natural to us. And it's easy just to decide. I'm doing this, I'm having that. And by removing the negativity, we're getting ourselves into that state permanently. All right, now, let's just play with this. Think about that intention of yours. And think about it with the conviction you're having it this year. Maybe it's a really big goal. Something that you would like to have, but maybe you're not taking yourself so seriously. I can't have a million dollars this year. I'll work on it, I'll release on it, but chances are it's not gonna happen. But look at it as, I'm gonna find a way. It's gonna happen this year, whatever it takes. It's happening this year. Stand by that conviction, no matter what that goal is. And see, when you get right behind it, when you stand up with conviction, behind that decision, notice again what's going on in your stomach or chest. See if there's a contraction there. And that's your ego rising up to block you, saying, no, no, you can't. Right? I feel like a pushiness, like a resistance. Now, where do you feel that? Where in your stomach or chest? And wherever that is, just open up. It's just energy. You don't have to make anything out of it. It's not good. It's not bad. Just open up a door right in front of that energy. And let that energy now go right on out that door. Let it leave even more. And 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 notice how you feel. See so if that contraction is a little bit smaller a little less pushy. And if there's any more there, just open up. Let the rest of that energy leave. Just imagine it all going right on out the door. Every last drop of it. Don't save some for later. Just open up and let it all go. And stay open until every bit of it is gone now. Just let it pass through. And even more. And all of it now. 
Notice how you feel. Lighter. And that is all that we're looking for, is that lighter feeling. See what's wrong with that? That's showing us that we're moving in the right direction. Now, let's examine our habit of relying on our mind. We treat it like it's our best friend, our closest confidant. Whenever we don't know what to do, we run to our mind. Tell me what to do. Tell me how to resolve this. Tell me how to find an answer. Think about a problem that you've been trying to resolve for a long, long time. Maybe you've been trying to resolve something related to your goal. Maybe you have a financial goal. You've been trying to get your finances in better shape. This has been a long time project of yours, trying to figure out how to do that. What do I need to do? How's it gonna happen? Maybe I'll just get lucky someday. Maybe the answer will come to me. And look at what you're doing. You're looking to your mind for that answer. How do I do it? Where's it going to come from? When's it going to happen? What do I have to do to make it happen? Now, how long have you been asking your mind for that solution? A long time, right? And if your mind had the answer, it would have given it to you already. But your mind will send you all over the place. Oh, go read that book. Go listen to that expert. Go try this, go try that. You try all these things, you still don't have it. And then your mind does have an answer for you. It does have a solution, a negative one. Its solution is, hey, you haven't been able to work it out. You haven't been able to solve it. Here's my advice. Beat yourself up. Get down on yourself. Right? Now, how's that going to get you to solve the situation? How's that going to get you to accomplish your goal by beating yourself up? By being all negative on yourself? That doesn't solve anything. And who's doing that? You're doing it, aren't you? Yeah, your mind's suggesting it, but it's your decision to go, okay, I'll do that. So that power's in your hands. And that means that you're in the driver's seat here. You're in charge. It's up to you. Now, would you rather be positive and love yourself? Or would you rather be negative and beat yourself up? Be critical on yourself. Be hard on yourself. Be negative on yourself. Which would you prefer? 
Well, I'm assuming you're deciding to be positive. After all, that's a smart choice. So with that being your choice, could you let go of beating yourself up now? Could you let that go? Could you let go of being hard on yourself? So you're doing it. Could you let it go a little bit? And could you let it go a little bit more? And could you let it go a little bit more? And even more. And look, even if this doesn't do anything, even if letting go of beating yourself up doesn't change anything, nothing's changing anyway. So how does it help you to be hard on yourself? Doesn't feel good. So you might as well let that go anyway, right? And after all, you're doing it. So could you let it go a little bit more? And could you let that go a little bit more? Let go of disapproving of yourself. And could you let go of disapproving of yourself a little bit more? And a little bit more. And a little bit more. And even 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 more. And how does that feel? Again, we're just looking for a lighter feeling. Feel a little bit lighter? That's awesome. We're moving in the right direction. Now, since it's a smart thing to do, could you give yourself some love and approval? For no reason. Just because you can. Could you like yourself a little bit? That's all. Just because. And could you like yourself a little bit more? For no reason, just because. And could you give yourself some more approval? And some more. And could you give yourself some more approval? And some more. And even 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 more. And how does that feel? Now, take a look at that intention. See if it's more possible now. And don't ask your mind. 
just trust your gut instinct here. Doesn't it feel a little bit more possible? See, now you're listening to something other than your mind. Your mind is loaded with I can'ts. But what you're talking to now is coming from a place of I can, from a place of possibility. What you're talking to is your beingness, the authentic you. That's coming from, through the power of your presence, from that silent observer, the witness here. And this part of you is in touch with all knowingness. And that's where these answers of yes, just show up instantly, just as a gut instinct. And again, this shows you the difference in what you choose to identify with. You can choose to identify with the mind and all the problems and negativity that it throws at you. Or you can choose to identify with the beingness, the fact that you are, that you are being here right now, and you always have been, and you always will be beyond the body, the mind, the ego, all that noise. You are that silent presence. And that's where all your creativity and power lies. Now, when you're ready, you can open up your eyes, but stay in touch with that beingness, that quietness that you are.